Hey everyone, it's Sophie from Build Your Jungle and today I'm going to be talking about 10 plants that very much struggled for me over winter and I would like to say I've not made my bed very well because there's a little Milo right there because he's got a poly foot and he has to have a cone on and I feel so sorry for him in that tiny furry burrito. As indoor gardeners, we face a lot of obstacles, especially over winter because pests try and hitchhike indoors the moment that you put the heating on, the temperature is less than ideal, everyone's humidity either gets way too moist or way too dry depending on whether or not you can afford to put the heating on. And it's safe to say that for me over winter that was like the biggest struggle period that I've ever had with my health problems and I really struggled to get up and actually do plant care a lot and some stuff very much suffered and it made me a little bit sad but at least with plants the good thing is that you always can have another chance unless it's like completely 100% rotted the whole thing like you can always have another go at starting it again propping it letting it grow back whatever so at number 10 let's start off with a plant that I very much think would have been okay if I had remembered to water it but it just got extreme and it is my Lediboria socialis, which is the leopard lily. And oh my goodness, I watered it finally, finally watered it yesterday. And I could, even though I let it drain, it's, it's still dripping out onto my hand. And this plant, I'm gonna have to show you a picture of what it usually looks like because this is just a poor excuse right now, a poor excuse. I mean, you cannot even really see on mine, but the leaves have this beautiful leopard print to them, which is why it's called the leopard lily. It is a flowering plant. It's actually, you can see, this is a good example of plants flowering when they're stressed because it's just thrown out a whole bunch of flowers. It's a plant that the flowers are a bit kind of meh. It's very much the foliage that is the star of the show and the star of this show has very much been snuffed out. What is kind of incredible as well about having gotten this plant to this point of neglect is that this is a plant that is native to South Africa. It's used to like sandy substrates and stuff and it is very well adapted to survive periods of drought. Well, obviously this was one period of drought too many. And I actually think this went about seven weeks without me watering it. So if anyone was wondering how long it takes to bring this plant to total uh, dehydration, it's about seven weeks. And this was in a very well draining substrate. So the fact that it's still dripping on me after it's had like a whole 24 hours to drain out makes me think that there are a heck of a lot of roots in this plant. And I do see a web and I'm not freaking out about spider mites because I know there's spider mites on a few plants downstairs, but that very much just looks like a little spider's web. The amount of times that I've watered this plant in the past and then a big spider has run on my hand is like one too many, but it's also desensitized me to being scared of spiders a bit. So silver linings. I do think that what we've got here is savable because although there's a mass drying out of leaves and foliage here, like you can see, see, see that there is still new foliage growing so I can prune it all back. And I also think because this pot is super full and it's probably quite root bound, I could quite easily take off some of these rhizomes, root them separately. Um, and also it will give me a higher chance of bringing this back just in case, because I really like this plant. And when I actually noticed it was like this, I was very disappointed in myself, but you know, everybody makes mistakes. And I think that's why I've started off with such a dire one, because it's one that is very obviously not been looked after. So the moral of the story is everybody makes mistakes. Don't beat yourself up. Everybody's got a plant that looks like this somewhere in the collection. Now that's quite promising there. Expect to see this one in Houseplant Hospital, definitely. You okay? Next was a pest problem. At number nine, we have the Senecio Mont Blanc, which was a lovely, unusual succulent that I always praise for having one of the coolest textures. It's got a very cotton wool kind of texture, which I feel like is why I didn't notice this pest because I always said, if this plant gets mealy bugs, 
I will be in trouble. And of course the plant got mealybugs and I didn't notice. I'm gonna pull this up a bit because it's annoying me. If you watched my day of plant care vlog when I was trying to desperately catch up with stuff that I'd neglected, I propped it in that because I'd originally treated it for mealybugs and I think I'd done that off camera. I saw it, I panicked. And I wouldn't have noticed if it wasn't for the fact that they were the pink species because when I got up close I eventually saw the newly hatched little pink guys hanging about in the stems on the new growth and stuff. Basically the more that I touched this plant the more of it fell to pieces before my eyes. The usual treatment for mealybugs is to get a cotton bud and use some isopropyl alcohol and it basically them by, I think it's called desiccation, and it's where they can't build up any resistance to the alcohol, and it ruins the structure of their cells. So you'll put some alcohol on them, and then they'll kind of melt away, and you just keep having to repeat that on the new bugs until it's gone. But there were so many, and there was such a large surface area of this plant that I had to put alcohol on, that I ended up burning it, and I've never ever managed to do that before. I burnt it with isopropyl alcohol. So at that point, everything's fallen apart, it's a disaster, and I just decide to take some propagations of the plant. And this is all I've got left from that beautiful plant that I loved a lot. These two tiny babies, I actually had three props, but one of them got very much downhill over the next few days following, so I was like, okay, we'll stick with these two. And I've had my eye on them very closely, but I'm pretty sure there are no no more mealies. This is one that should be really easy to solve. Like it's a shame because obviously succulents grow uh, relatively slower than these kind of plants that I'm used to that are very fast, vigorous growers. So I have to have a bit of patience because while it can be a con that they grow slower, the pro of succulents is that it's so much easier to root them and there's a much higher success rate. Whereas things like this can rot quite easily. So anyway, from now on, from now on, I'll be keeping a very close eye on this plant. And at least I managed to save some of it because when it was all falling apart in my hands, there was a hot minute where I thought, I'm gonna completely lose this plant. Next is one that I'm gonna pull out my favorite word for, second favorite word. It irked me, irked. It's number eight and I've got to try and get it from an awkward place with great difficulty, so I'll be right back. You might be able to tell what this is if you are a fan of this genus just by looking at the top little bit of the rhizome there. It's an alocasia. I've said a lot of times that alocasia don't like me. I thought we'd change that. I've actually, and I will just grab it. My alocasia cuculata from Jules is doing so well. It's actually getting another leaf. I'm really pleased about that one, but this one remains to be a very difficult guy, but I'm just seeing a tiny, tiny little new caterpillar starting to push up. So thank goodness, right? So this is my Alocasia Friday. She used to look like this. I've done a really nice job of rehabbing her last year. I did some top dressing with sphagnum moss. I upped the humidity, I upped the light. Things were going very, very well until winter hit in the UK and it was very cold and obviously it's cost of living crisis and we very much can't afford to have the heating on all the time and I don't think that we put the heating on until much later in the year last year as well and this is a plant that as soon as it has like a coldness below the temperature that it likes it just hates me and the leaves go and it all descends into chaos pretty quickly. But I feel like this one, even though it's one of the most extreme downhill trajectories of plants in my collection over winter, I'm not shocked by this one because this has happened to me multiple times and I've had to grow it back from the rhizome countless times. So with the Frydeck, I really do think that it's just quite a sensitive species of alocasia. In the past, I've taken it out and used sphagnum moss because I really do like sphagnum moss for rehabbing plants, but this time I've left it in the chunky mix because the roots are really nicely established in here and it's already starting to grow back. So I've got it in a prop box. It's about 90% humidity in there and that seems to be doing good for it. And hopefully 
we'll get some new leaves and we won't be a one leaf wonder because this plant had just been upgraded from a one leaf wonder to a two leaf Keith and I don't want to go back. So anybody with tips about this plant, please do assist me in the comments because I'm not very good at alocasia, I need the tips. And number seven, it's a plant that I originally loved and especially because it was only like three pounds, it was really affordable and it was a type of pilia and it was pilia caderi, I think caderii, Ellen silver. And it's basically a plant that has leaves that are covered in blister variegation. So it looks like metallic silver, which is very, very striking. I very much liked it and it was easy to grow at first. Like I don't have any other pilia at all, but I found it really easy to care for. The leaves were sizing up really well. And then I moved it and it clearly was not getting enough light and was hidden behind too many plants and it became super leggy. And the second mistake that I made was this plant has roots that grow so, so quickly. And that means that the substrate's drying out a lot more quickly. So of course it ended up with edema and edema can have many causes. It's basically the cells bursting because the plant's taking up more water than it can transpire. And I think that the reason that this plant got edema was because it was drying out too much between waterings because it's quite a, a vocal plant as well. You can see visible signs of when it needs water, it will droop slightly. And I'd let it get to the point too many times where leaves had completely dried out. It was completely drooped over. This entire plant ended up with edema and I do have it, I will get it. So this is it and it looks awful awful <laughs> so bad like especially when you see how lovely this plant was before and i was very disappointed when this plant gets edema most of the silveriness is lost it's gone much duller and then you get this pinky and beige tone of the leaves because that's the actual colour of the leaves coming through when the light's no longer reflecting off the silver blister variegation you can see it's dropped a lot of leaves. So there are like two options I feel like with this plant. We could do hard reset, which is what it sounds like where you chop everything and see if new plant continues to grow. New plant, that was terrible English. We knew what I meant though. Um, and or should I take some clippings from the top and try and root this? I have never propagated pilia before though, other than by separation an old job ones, but that's it. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it's worth it, especially when it's such an affordable plant to replace, but let me know what you guys think, because if you think this is one that will respond well to a hard reset or anyone has propagated this before and it's actually quite easy, then I might as well give it a go. But whatever I do, it can't remain in this state <laughs> because all the new growth just is not healthy like each time because how can it be when it's growing from this? Then I have a joint one uh, because these are two plants that Jules sent me and we sent each other a lot of stuff when we did plant swaps. On both of our sides we had some plants that didn't make it and two that didn't make it for me and oh my goodness I am just so good that this one didn't make it. So I don't even have them anymore but I do have the videos of from the unboxing of what they were like at the time. So the first was Philodendron Ring of Fire because Jules sent me a little 6cm plant of that and it had the nicest variegation ever as well. And I'm really confident with Philodendron care but I just believe that the substrate got far too wet in traveling but in transport and transit tr knew it was a trans something and essentially it got root rot basically but the whole of the stem had rotted at the base as well it was like basal root rot and then the alocasia dragon scale which was one of the three alocasias that Jules sent me that didn't make it and I think it was because that one didn't need as much humidity as I gave it because it literally seemed to have melted and rotted suddenly and I had it in my prop box originally so I do think that I gave it too much humidity I don't know have you guys found that alocasia dragon scale does not like very very high humidity so yeah those two didn't make it but there's not much more I can say about them because that was very just a straightforward quick blunder that happened very quickly unlike the Lidoboria which was a very slow process of neglect and number four we have 
oh my goodness, my hands are so dry. And number four, we have one of my previous absolute favourites and I was a bit upset with her last year, but I have to say, I, there's still the affection is there. We can rebuild our relationship, I'm sure. And it is Philodendron Rubejuvenile El Choco Red. And I'm actually, oh no, it's too heavy for me. She's here and it, it's a beautiful velvety philodendron and I had a bigger leaf than this before. It was actually doing very well because I'll tell you the whole story. Let me put you back down. So this plant was an import from Ecuador and it was originally, it had that rehab decline and then it came back. I was really pleased. Got a massive big velvety leaf, ah, leaf, leaf. absolutely beautiful was obsessed with that plant. The caterpillars come out bright red as well and the backs are red uh, when it's more juvenile. It's a lovely plant and especially how the lobes and the veins become more, what is the word, defined as the plant gets larger and it gets that uh, undulation to the sides of the leaves as well. But then I moved it. Previously it had heat coming from underneath it from a set of grow lights that were on the shelf below. But when I moved it, I didn't think about how it would change the care needs of that plant based on the temperature shift. I didn't realize that just moving it just off those grow lights, but in the same area would cause it to be so much colder in that area. And therefore not only was the substrate evaporating water a lot slower, but also the plant had started to go dormant because to the plant it was like, oh, it's winter now, let me go to sleep for a bit. And I kept treating it as if it had not done that, which resulted in edema on that big, beautiful leaf. And I thought it was gonna be a disaster, but I updated my watering routine that leaf continued to decline, but I left it on the plant as long as I possibly could because when you're seeing something like this on the back of your plants, that's actually what the burst cells look like of edema. And if you cut that leaf off, it's actually going to cause worse edema and edema that could affect other leaves, could affect other leaves on your plant. How many times did I just say edema? And it was droopy and unhappy for a while, but now it's finally brought itself back up. It's facing the light again. It's doing much better and it's got a new caterpill. So finally we're back on track with this plant. So at least there's one plant in this video that was a, I was struggling, but now it's fine <laughs> because it's a bit more motivational, I think. I don't even know about these numbers anymore. Three, I think, three, probably, probably three, maybe not. If anyone had any queries about why this plant wasn't in my favorites, um, this is why I've just become slightly less in love with it due to issues recently, but it's my Philodendron Tartum. And don't get me wrong, she's absolutely beautiful. And from a distance, you wouldn't even know that anything was wrong. I actually chopped this plant to give to Jules as well, because I know that they'd wanted one. And it's very unusual for a Philodendron because it's not got big blocky foliage leaves. And it's not about the color, it's very much about the form and the fenestration of these leaves that's so unusual. Tartum actually means twisted and it's because of the weird way that all the leaves are growing. If that's what you were looking at this plant and thinking is, do I mean it's drooping? No, that's how it grows. But what's actually happened with this plant is that it's got some edema on this leaf and I'll be able to show you on a close up, but it lost its newest leaf that it gave me that was much bigger, it was like twice the size of any of the leaves I'd had so far and it lost that newest leaf. This leaf was on the way out and I was panicking and I was thinking, is the whole plant just gonna be screwed now? And I can be a bit of an overwaterer. So if anything, I feel like having that seven weeks of neglect helped this plant uh, to be watered appropriately. And I think it is now probably on the mend. I'm not seeing any sign of new growth or anything, but it stopped declining and no more than this leaf seem affected. So that should hopefully, hopefully be good now. And it has absolutely nothing to do with propagating this plant actually, because there are two plants in here and the one that I propagated was not affected, but it was actually the other one. So it's definitely uh, an overwatering issue. And hopefully we'll get a really big leaf from this plant again in summer and not have mildew because I had a mildew issue on this 
last year as well because it is a really lovely plant and it's one I wanted for so long before I got it and I'd be upset if something happened to it though I do want to find a new place to live because it's currently living back there and I think it's a bit too close to the radiator but what are you gonna do I would like to get this whole thing just moved a foot further away from the radiator uh, but I need a person to help me that can actually lift things currently. Our number two is one that no one will be surprised about whatsoever and I've got to go and get it. It's finally on a live. <laughs> it's the Philodendron Atom and I you know I did say that L the Ludoboria looked the worst of all the plants but technically I'd say this one does because that one still had hope whereas this one is a full-on crispy yeah it's just completely gone it it's probably yeah it feels really root bound because these pots are really flimsy and this plant was in my plants I regret buying video and I was yoing off about how kind of dissatisfied I had been with this plant since it had the rips and it lives in the bathroom well it lived it once lived in the bathroom god rest your soul for the blah, 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 blah. and for the majority of the time that this plant got watered it would be that I'd be in the shower and I'd see it and I'd be like quickly squirt it with the not hose shower head so the poor thing never got fertilized but honestly this is going to sound awful, but I just felt a bit relieved. I felt a bit relieved. I thought I no longer have to be focused on trying to rehab this plant because clearly all focus has already been lost. A lot of people nickname this the cabbage plant because and you can't tell from this, so here's a picture. That's what it usually looks like, but it's just a bit of a boring plant to me. As much as this sounds like a giant fib, I did not do this on purpose. We know I didn't like her very much, but I did not do this on purpose. Uh, it just kind of happened and then I saw it and I just thought, nah, things happen. One less thing for me to be stressed about. And finally, at number one, I think, because today my brain, I really have lost track of the numbers. This one's a bit emotional. It's emotional for me. I just want to say before I show her that she will be okay guys but we had a little bit of a problem on nelly there i mean thank goodness that she's still looking all right up here like and the smaller plant is still looking all right although we've had some crisping again it was a watering problem which has turned into a big leaf that's full of edema and I am resisting all urges to remove said leaf because I'm wanting the plant to use the nutrients at least from the remaining green part of the leaf and for it to help it photosynthesize because there's nothing like contagious about this it's simply overwatering. When I first saw it I panicked and I thought if I've overwatered this will it get root rot but the roots are fine it smells fine i really that sounds really annoying me i really don't think that it's got any kind of rot it's really just a case of the same thing as what happened to my el choco red which is i have destroyed this leaf by overwatering it and really i think what it is is when you're struggling to you know when you're unwell and you're struggling to do watering and stuff you will often just think quick let me get these done and it was me watering this without checking it which is why it's always so important to check the moisture content with your you know by touch just to check but not to water blind as people say but i'm so glad that she's all right because when that started to do that i thought has the top got edema as well and i'm not sure there's a little bit of like discoloration on the back of this one but i've never seen the burst cells on this so i'm hoping she's all right she's still beautiful you know but this is why i keep thinking about taking out the smaller one because then i'm like at least if i have a disaster with my big crystalline i'm gonna have a smaller one still but i love this plant so much like so much i really do love this plant um and if that hadn't happened she would have been in my top 10 and you know what i think that if i'm being 100% honest you are number 11 because i love you so much the velvetiness the silver veins like it's such a beautiful plant uh, but obviously yeah with anthurium just be careful not to overwater because they are epiphytes and they don't like to sit in wet substrates and the bigger a pot is the less that you need to water an anthurium like this really doesn't need to be watered frequently 
at all when it's at this size like you really just got to monitor it and when the climate is so all over the place like yesterday it was lovely and warm and then this morning it was like frosty icy there were icicles outside and it changes so quickly so you really got to be on the ball with like okay this week what is the weather like kind of thing. But as with any mistake, we learn things and I have learned 10 things this winter. So it is good to be able to reflect on it. And also making this video reminds me not to make the same mistakes again, because I feel like you really are like either an overwater or an underwater. And I was an overwater until I was forced medically to be an underwater. But it's all a learning curve. No one's collection is perfect, and I say this all the time. And uh, if you guys want to watch me try and save some of these plants, then make sure you subscribe to my channel because they will be on Houseplant Hospital. I mean, you, my dear, you're not bad enough. You're all right, you're all right. Anyway, I hope that you guys have enjoyed hearing me talk about some plants that I've struggled with over winter. We like to be realistic on this channel. I would love to know about any plants you guys have struggled with or are struggling with at the moment. Please let me know in the comments down below. At the moment, I'm posting long form content on Fridays, so please do hit that button, subscribe to, to be notified when I next make a video. I post every day on TikTok and occasionally on Instagram as well. So do check those out. There's all kinds of funky business on there. And if you guys fancy buying some illustrated houseplant products, then please head over to my website. It's buildyourjungle.com. And I hope you're having a great day thinking about houseplants. Thank <laughs> you.